Well, hello everyone, it's Rob Doran from Bath in the UK with another metal update. Not done one of these for a while. Hope you all like it, yeah. Uh, it was record store day on April the 16th and my son and I, uh, my son instantly is just starting to get into records and metal and particularly Iron Maiden, strangely enough. So we were both fortunate enough um, to pick up the Iron Maiden exclusive record store day release, which was the Empire of the Clouds on picture disc with a lovely, beautiful die cut sleeve. Uh, this is the UK edition, which I picked up from Raves from the Grave in Froome, my local record store. Uh, it cost me about £20, and my son got a copy as well, which he's opened and we've played. This one's going to remain sealed, as this is my one. What are kids for? Uh, and the B-side is Maiden Voyage, which is Bruce and Nico. It's a combination of their interviews about the track on Planet Rock Radio. So um, it's a very nice gatefold sleeve once you undo it. Uh, and the picture disc really, really pops, and it's really, really quite a nice package. So in the UK, there's 5,500 copies of this one. In the USA, they also issued a copy of 6,000, uh, and it had a gold sticker on the rear, and obviously it's got a BMG logo on the USA one and a Parlophone one on the UK, so there are a couple of differences to look out for. But a very cool design. Um, sadly, some are going on eBay for quite a big, hefty profit. Um, so make sure you check out my Facebook page, Iron Maiden Vinyl Collectors, um, where what I've done is I've put a trading post up. So if anyone did buy more than one copy of this and they'd like to trade it for something, as opposed uh, to um, to sort of sell it for a huge profit, it's a much fairer way of doing it. Um, feel free to sort of join my page and post your copy there. So. Um, there you go. I can't stand profiteering. So there you go. There's that, which is very, very awesome. Can't beat a bit of Maiden, can you? So what else have I been purchasing and um, and listening to of late? Well, everybody loves a bit of thrash metal. Now, but but does everybody love a bit of anthrax? I think probably most of you metalheads do. Um, this was the first. I actually bought the seven inch of this, and it was one of the first things I ever bought on Anthrax in about 1988 when I began to get into thrash metal heavily. Uh, this is "I'm the Man," which was uh, a bit of a a bit of a crossover track. Anthrax tried their hand at doing a um, rap uh, track. They're very very much into Public Enemy and bands like that, Ice T and Ice Cube. Uh, so this is the original UK 12 inch from then. So I believe this is it's 87. Um, it's off the, uh, it's around the time of Among the Living. Uh, the 12 inch has got two live tracks, Caught in a Mosh and I Am the Law. And it's on the Island record label. So there you go. And this, the sleeve's a little bit battered, but the record is pretty much, well, it looks very new. So it almost looks a bit unplayed to me. So it's obviously been stored in somebody's collection, but maybe played once to put it on cassette for easy listening in the car and stuff like that. But no, um, always try and pick this, this one up if you can see it, because the uh, track I'm the Man is quite funny. But if you live with your parents, make sure you turn it down, because the swearing is quite bad. OK, so there you go. Bit of anthrax and a bit of classic thrash metal. Love it. Love it. Takes me right back, that one, to when I was, uh, <clears throat> how old was I in 88? Well, uh, I was about 12, 11, 12, so, no, oh, no, I wasn't, I was 11, 11, 10, 11, so, yes, takes me right back to being a young metalhead, getting in, into bands, not having the internet, uh, having to wait for magazines to come out each week to try and get little photos and snippets of information. It's changed nowadays, I tell you. Uh, and not for the better, I don't think, in terms of getting in, into bands. There's much more of a mystique in the old days. Love Dio. Uh, picked up a little single from him, him. This is Hungry for Heaven. This is off his Sacred Heart album uh, from 1985, off the top of my head. This is backed with the King of Rock and Roll. Love Dio. Think he's one of the best metal vocalists that there ever was. And this is on the, the silver moulded injection vinyl uh, from Vertigo, and this is a English or a UK pressing. So do love my Dio. Anything I see with Ronnie's name on, I always try and, and pick up because it really is a benchmark of quality. I particularly like his work with Sabbath um, as well. And I'm going to show you something in just a second uh, that I picked up fairly recently, which I do own on CD because I do collect the bands on CD. 
uh, but something for Ronnie and Sabbath, which I picked up yesterday, funnily enough, um, which is a great record, uh, and another thing with him on. Another great bit of thrash here. This is Testament. This is live at the Dynamo Open Air Festival in Eindhoven, June 1987. So this features all the classic tracks from Testament's early years. Over the Wall, Reign of Terror, Apocalyptic City, Do or Die, Burnt Offerings. And it's a great mini album. Uh, and it's definitely, definitely one to pick up if you like your Bay Area thrash metal. And just look at Eric Peterson's amazing BC Rich Mockingbird. Lovely, lovely, beautiful, beautiful guitar player. He's now with Dean Guitars. He's got a really cool uh, guitar called the Old Skull, which I would like to get hold of, actually. That's with EMG pickups and everything like that. So they're a really, really tight, good thrash band. Uh, here we go. This is live at Eindhoven, 87, on the Atlantic label, uh, part of Megaforce. Okay, so I believe this is a German pressing, this one. And like I say, it's definitely extremely well worth picking up uh, if you like live albums, if you like classic metal live, and if you like thrash, because Chuck Billy is one of the premier um, thrash metal singers. Brilliant stuff. Well worth picking up. Okay, so another thing I've just got is the new Ace Frehley record. Now, Ace Frehley was the original guitar player in uh, American rock legends Kiss. Um, he's now done his new album, which is Origins Volume 1, which is basically cover songs. Uh, he includes stuff like Magic Carpet Ride, uh, Bring It On Home from Zeppelin, Thin Lizzy's Emerald, Emerald, White Room, Street Fighting Man, Spanish Castle Magic from Jimi Hendrix. But he includes a cover of uh, Fire and Water, which is an old Free track, an old UK-British blues rock band called Free, one of their better tracks. Um, and it features Paul Stanley, and they've actually recorded a video so it's Ace and Paul Stanley back together again. Um, Ace also records a couple of Kiss tracks, Parasite and Cold Gin. And he also does Rock and Roll Howl from Creatures of the Night, which Ace didn't play on. Uh, but he's recorded a cover of here. So this is the um, gatefold. This is the double black vinyl version. And uh, it includes a CD copy of the album there as well. So you can get it on CD. The CD retails in the UK for about 9 99 I got this from Amazon and sadly they were a bit late in sending this out. This was due I think the 17th of April and I only just got that yesterday which was the 19th. So Amazon, it was a pre-order. It should have been there on the release day. So, you know, better luck next time because I do pay Prime. I pay £80 a year um, to get free postage on stuff and to get things, you know, a little bit sooner. So I was a bit disappointed with it, but it's a good record. Pick it up. Uh, you can stream some of the tracks on YouTube uh, and stuff like that now. So if you like a bit of classic metal, classic rock, that's one to pick up. Now, Slayer have reissued their Metal Blade reissues uh, on vinyl again. This is Live Undead, recorded live in New York City. It says on the back on the Haunting North American tour, um, but what it is, it was basically recorded in a rehearsal studio with some friends of theirs, so the crowd noise uh, is not a proper concert. It also includes a studio version of Chemical Warfare from the um, Haunting the Chapel EP. It's got a nice, strong, sturdy card insert sheet with a great classic 84 band photo of, of Slayer, uh, which includes the lyrics and everything like that, which is a really nice touch. Um, this one's still... It's still sealed, but I've just opened the slits. 180 gram black vinyl, but you can get these on coloured vinyl as well. Um, they're really nice. They've got like a metal blade in a sleeve, which is poly lined, just to protect your vinyl. And the metal blade logo. This really heavy 180 gram vinyl, and it's quiet. And it's not, it's very hard to warp these sort of uh, heavier records. And it's just a really good set. That's the back cover. They've done Show No Mercy, Haunting the Chapel and Hello Eights like this. And you also get the poster as well, which I won't unwrap, but it's um, it's a single-sided album cover poster. So I can heartily and strongly certainly recommend all you metalheads picking, uh, picking that up, particularly if you don't own a lot of original Slayer on vinyl. Um, some of their stuff can go for quite expensive prices now as most bands can on vinyl now, because it's so popular again. Um, but try and pick those up. They're around about, you'll get them between 15 and 20 pounds each. Now everyone that knows me knows me, I love Merciful Fate and King Diamond. 
and I managed to pick this up for four quid yesterday. This is No Presents for Christmas from 1985. This is a Dutch pressing manufactured in the Netherlands on Roadrunner Records. Uh, and it's a 12 inch single and it's backed with Charon. And it's in really good nick. This has barely been played. So it's got the nice original Roadrunner logo on it there. And um, it's just an absolute metal classic. And if you like your underground metal and you like collecting that, King Diamond and Merciful Fate are certainly bands which, um, which you really need to get into your collection. Vocally, he's very high pitched. He was extremely influenced by Rob Halford from Priest. Um, and it's not for everybody. Some people get a little bit, um, a little bit put off by the screeching vocals, but uh, you know he doesn't do it all like that. There are some, there are some gruffer bits as well. So you know if you like your power metal bands like Hammerfall and stuff like that, um, it's definitely worth checking out. And he's made some consistently brilliant albums. Uh, particularly Them is probably my favourite King Diamond album, but Voodoo's exceptionally good as well. Uh, Abigail. Um, talking about Rob Halford and Priest, picked up Ram It Down. Didn't own this one. This is their 1988. Um, it's their release after Turbo, which was their very controversial guitar synth album. This is slightly going back more to their metal length edges, and this was the stopgap between Turbo and the real full on metal assault that was Painkiller from 1990. So, this is a good, lovely original pressing. Only a fiver this cost me. So, I was really, really pleased to pick this up, and I was delighted it had the inner sleeve as well with the lyrics and the credits. And this is a UK pressing on the red CBS label. So um, it's not one of their fantastically classic albums, but it's a more of a return to their metal, anthemic metal, uh, sort of British steel style, in my opinion. Um, but the next album, Painkiller, is an absolute beast. Um, Venom. Everybody knows I like a bit of death metal and a bit of black metal. Uh, never owned this. This is an original, another 1984 Roadrunner record. This is Manor 2, the 12 inch. Uh, that's the back. So, very cool. Once again, in fantastic condition. Uh, the original Roadrunner label from 1984. So, on the B side, you've got Woman and Dead of the Night. So there you go. So, you know, Venom still going now, still releasing music. Uh, progenitors of the early black metal style, um, although some argue it was more like a filthy rock and roll style. Um, but I, I still think that this, these guys were, a lot of their influence still is within black metal, what with people changing their names and the general image of the chains. Maybe more so than some of some of the music, but even some of the music was very chaotic, very discordant, very loose, very punk rock. So it certainly had a big bearing on the way that black metal uh, evolved and sounded going forward. A couple of one uh, pound twelve inches I managed to pick up. This is Hanoi Rocks, uh, a glam band from Finland. Uh, very influential on Guns N' Roses, and obviously they're in, in the news a lot now. This is Underwater World, a UK on CBS 12-inch, with Shakes and Magic Carpet Ride on the B-side. So a bit of Michael Munro, Andy McCoy, a bit of sleaze rock there. Uh, I was staying on that, on that bent, you've got a bit of Skid Row, 18 and Life. Okay, with four tracks, uh, three tracks in total on the B-side, Midnight, Tornado and Here I Am. So that here I am's a live track. Uh, so this was only a quid, so pick that one up, which was very good. Like a bit of Skid Row. Sebastian Bart's got a very good, uh, good strong metal voice. And then uh, the last one for today, we talked about Ronnie Dio, didn't we? And Sabbath, and to be honest with you, one of the best covers in metal, uh, taking inspiration from Sabbath songs. Uh, this is Live Evil uh, from the Mob Rules tour of 81. This was released in 1982. And there was a lot of friction in uh, producing this album in the studio. Uh, a lot, lot of uh, backstabbing went on between Ronnie uh, and Geezer Butler and Tony I Iommi, and it actually left to uh, left uh, ended up with Ronnie leaving the band afterwards. But this is a good recording, and it's they were a great band, Sabbath, all throughout their career. But with Ronnie, they were uh, shit hot. So I particularly like their Heaven and Hell stuff they did just before Ronnie died. That album. Um, is absolutely fantastic. So anything that you can get from Ronnie Dio with Sabbath, it's got class and quality written all over it, in my opinion. So great record, well worth picking up if you like your live metal and your classic heavy metal. 
So that's all I've got to show for you today. It's a 15 minute video. That's about the right sort of time to do. So leave your comments below. Tons more metal coming your way. Looking forward to sending you a lot more metal into your inboxes and onto your YouTube feeds. So uh, tell me what you want to see. And uh, it's been good to come back with some real good quality metal stuff. And there's, a lot, as I say, a lot more coming forward. So, so keep it here. Keep it on, on this channel. And I'll see you all soon. Cheers. Have a good day.